Hello, welcome back. This is lesson number four, and we're going to talk about lists. So in Python, we've so far looked at several types of collections. We've looked at NumPy arrays, and we've looked at strings. But NumPy arrays aren't particularly common. Normally, if you're working in Python, and you're using just the built-in functions, you will probably use lists instead. Lists look like this, and they are denoted by open and closed square brackets like so. If we can assign those to variables, much like we would uh, with arrays or with strings. And if we look at the type of x, we can see it's of a list type. Now one of the unique things about lists that's very different to numpy arrays and also to collections is that lists, uh, to strings, pardon me, are that lists can contain any type. NumPy arrays, although we didn't show it, can only contain a single type. It can be all floats or all integers or all strings, for example. But in a list, you can have as many different types as you want. In fact, you can nest lists. So you can have lists in lists in lists and so on, all the way down as far as you want to go. So for example, we could have uh, my list is equal to Let's put in zero and then two and then another list with zero and four and six and then another list which is in fact two lists. So it's a list of a list with just one element and we'll call it 10. And then we can have another which says string. Python is perfectly happy for that. And much like any other collection, we can index it. We can say, okay, what's the first element of my list? It's zero. What about the second element and the third? And that will be a list in and of itself. Because of this, if we want to index a sub list, what we need to do is we need to index it again. This is notably different from NumPy, where in the arrays we would use a comma. But in NumPy arrays, they always have to be rectangular. You cannot have jagged lists of lists or jagged arrays of arrays like you can with Python lists. And because Python lists can be jagged, and by that I mean you can have a list of lists where each list is of a different length and even um, containing different data types, that means that you have to list, use indexing recursively. And by recursively, I mean, if we look at the third element, and say we wanted the first element of the th that, uh, that list, we say, my list, third element, first element. And if we were to look at, say, the fourth element of the list, the list of lists with just 10, then the first element of that is just one list. And then we look at the first element again, to access that value itself. And that's how lists work. That's it really. Lists are quite simple, but there's a lot you can do with them. For instance, if we combine them with the for loops, we can say for item in, and then a list, because it's a collection, let's use my list. We can print type of item. And we can see all of the different types that we're looking at in my list. We've got integers, lists, and a string. We could also print out the items themselves and look at exactly what's in the list, much like we would with strings. There we go. So that's how lists work in Python. There is a bit more to it though, and there's a couple of things that you need to remember. One of them is that with lists and with arrays, although I didn't show this before, you can assign individual elements individually. So for example, in my list, suppose we wanted to change the first element. Suppose we didn't want it to be zero, we wanted it to be one. Now what you could do is change that and just rewrite the whole list out again, but obviously that's time consuming and difficult. Instead, what we can do is access the first element and treat that as if it were a variable. So we can say my list first element is equal to one. So assign the value of one 
on to the first element of my list. Now, if we look at my list again, you'll see that the first element has changed. And this is something that you can do with any mutable uh, collection in Python. I will explain what mutable is in a second. And to demonstrate what immutable is, which I think is more obvious, will be to show you how this works with a string. So if we have a string, and we can call it, uh, well, string, and suppose we wanted to change the first S to a capital. We would go there, access the first element. Yep, that's S, and then we can assign capital S to it. Except we can't, because strings are immutable. This means that once you create one, you cannot change it. What you can do is create a new version of the uh, collection of the string and then change what you want in that new version and then overwrite the previous one. You can do that, but you can't change the object in place. The opposite is true of lists and arrays. You can change elements in place and thus not required to create a whole new object. This may seem unimportant. However, this becomes quite relevant when you look at how Python deals with references. So we've got my list here. Suppose we wanted to change one of the elements. Suppose we wanted to change the last element from string to capitalized string. But we wanted to keep the original list as well. So you can say my copy list is equal to my list. Now, if I've got my copy list, let's get that last element, minus one, and we just, we can't change the string itself, so we'll just assign a new one, like so. Now, my copy list has been changed. Okay, so we've changed the copy. Let's go back and look at the original list. Suppose we want to do something with it. Oh, that's changed too? What's going on? Well, <laughs> this is a very common thing in Python and is a direct consequence of mutability. When we created this list, what we did was we created an object in memory and refer to it by the my list character string as the variable. So this variable refers to this object. However, when we did this assignment and said, okay, let's have my copy list and let's assign my list to it, what we did was we didn't copy this object. We copied the reference to the object. So there is just one object and this thing points at it. But when we did this, now this also points at the same object, but this, that one object hasn't changed. There is no duplicate, there's no copy. It's just the same one. So if we edit it with one of the variables, we're also editing it for all of them. This is because of mutability, because in immutability, if we were to uh, do my copy string and assign string to that, if we wanted to change things, uh, we can't because strings are immutable. So this problem doesn't arise. Now this may seem a bit unusual to all of you, the fact that I'm banging on about this mutability, immutability stuff. This is because it's really important in Python. This is, for me, when I was first learning Python, I would say 90% of the bugs I came across were because of me misunderstanding what was going on in these situations. So that is why I really want to get this point across. But you ask, how, how do I actually copy a list over then? Well, you can. You can use the list function. So list is a built-in type, and like all types, if you turn it into a function, it will convert whatever you give it, or at least try to, into the thing you give it. So for example, if we just use the string one and give it a number, it will turn that into a string. If we do the same thing with list to an already existing list, what that does is it copies it in memory. So we can say my copy list is equal to my list. And now my copy list contains the capitalized string. 
and we want to change my list back so we end up with the situation we were after. So go for the last element and equal to lowercase string. Now, if we look at my list, we'll see lowercase string and my copy list, we've got uppercase string. Thus, when we use this list function, it copies it across. Okay, so before we finish, there's a little bit more I want to do a little about slicing and just a couple of list functions that I haven't mentioned. But first of all, we need to talk about advanced slicing. So, so far we've looked at slicing in arrays and I've shown you that if we use my list, we could go, we could slice from say the first element to the fifth element or sixth element, like so. Now, one thing you may not know is that you can add a second colon and then provide a number. What this means is that you're saying, I want to go from this element up to, but not including this element and in steps of this element. So if we're going from zero up to the sixth element, non-inclusive, so we're gonna show the first five elements, but we're gonna go in steps of five, we'll get the first element because that's within the list, but we're only going five up, so we don't get another one. Perhaps this is more uh, obvious, I use two. So if we go to the end of the list, so we just delete that, and we're starting at the start, so we can delete that too. What this is gonna do is it's going to go through the list, going through every other value. I can show this more clearly with a range. So let's see, the uh, x is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Right, that's x, okay? So let's iterate over the list, well, slice the list, and go through every other value. There you go, now we got one, three, five, seven. If we do it with starting from the second element instead, we can get two, four, six, eight, and we can get out the even numbers instead. This is advanced slicing, and it can be quite powerful you can do some quite interesting things with it. Now, typing out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is a bit of a pain to demonstrate this. So instead, we're gonna create some lists and build this out of numbers and for loops. The easiest way to do that is by knowing a couple of simple commands with the list. So we say my list, and let's create an empty list. Empty lists look like this. Just open, close, square brackets. Now what we can do is mylist.append. Append will add something to the end of our list. Let's look at my list again, and you can see we've added something to it. And so on, and you can keep going. Now you'll notice we accidentally added the four. We didn't want to add that. So what we can do is mylist.remove and provide the value of the list and then my list will have been will have had it removed. You can also do pop, which is an interesting one. Pop will take the index, the element at the index, and remove it from the list and return it to you. So my list.pop of zero is going to take the first element, the one, remove it from the list, and print it to screen. Which is like so. So if we look at my list now. You can see it's got one value. Let's pop out that out, and we've got an empty list again. So we can use this. We can use this and the range function that I talked about last time. For i in range, let's go up to 100 this time. We can do my list dot append, and remember because range is going from zero to 99, we want to do i plus one. Now we have a list from one to 100. And if we want, we can do my list, all the values, every other value. Or we can do every even value, or we can do every fifth value, like so. Or we could go from 
zero. Well, we are going from zero, so we want to get every fourth value. There we go. Or seventh or tenth. But we'll be starting at one. If we want to start at zero, we need to add another element to the beginning of the list. Okay. All right, so that's all of lists. There's a couple of other things to note I would recommend playing around with. If you have a list and then you have it of a single value, you can try multiplying it by a number. You can get certain things back. <coughs> lists can be added together and they will be concatenated. They can't be subtracted though. So these are some things to bear in mind and have a play around with. Hopefully you'll get to have a go with them in the exercises.